Murdered by Mommy, the James Hutchison story. Saturday, February 27th at 3 a.m., a police report states that Brittany Crossgrove drove her kids aged 9, 7, and 6 to Rush Run Park in Preble County. Gosney tells police that her boyfriend, James Hamilton, who shares the same first name with her son, although he is not the biological father, was pressuring her to get rid of her children, as you can see in the video here. They were, they wasn't listening. Mm -hmm. And he thought that James thought I wasn't making him Mine, listen. Mine, right. Because um, he's normally at work mm -hmm. nonstop. But um, he doesn't, he thinks they hate him because mm -hmm. they don't really listen to him right. well. Sometimes they don't even listen to me, but they're kids. Sure. Um, but. We can get into all this book, okay? Tell me what happened. He told, James told me to get rid of the kids. Okay. And so um, I took them for a drive to make them think I mm -hmm. want to get rid of them, but. I'm not going to get rid of my kids for anybody on this mm -hmm. planet. And he told me to get rid of them because they were not listening. He was tired of putting up with it. And I told, kept telling him, like, I'm not going to get rid of my for kids. Like, I can take them, give you a break mm -hmm. and from me and them for a little mm -hmm. while, take them for a drive, whatever. But I'm not getting rid of them. They're my kids. I will not do that. Okay. And I said, if I wanted to do that, I would have gave him up a long time ago. Mm -hmm. But he kept telling me, either get these kids under control or um, get rid of them or do something with them. So I tried asking family members to... So what um, happened last night? Let's fast forward to that. We went for a drive. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what road it was. Okay. It was just we were just driving around. Um, well, the kids were going to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I had pulled over to this um, a little booth in the middle town. Yeah. Okay. It's a little stall or something. Mm -hmm. A bathroom. I pulled over to the bathroom and let them all use the bathroom. While it was raining and stuff, I left the, left the door unlocked in the van mm -hmm. and told them, we'll all go in here, not all of us at once, but each one of us go in here one at a time, use the bathroom. So we went in the bathroom. Well, I couldn't go in there, but when I went to go in the bathroom, I told them to go ahead and just get in the van. Mm -hmm. Well, James had slipped and fell because his mm -hmm. shoes were wet, slippery, and he had hit his head. Mm -hmm. And... Did it kill him? Is that what you're telling me? Did, did the fall hurt him? Well, he was... I asked him if he was okay, he wouldn't answer me. So, I noticed he was breathing kind of heavy. Mm -hmm. And I thought maybe that's not normal. I've never seen him blurry that way before. Well, he was breathing. I don't know how long he was breathing for, but he had fell and busted his head on the side of the van mm -hmm. and trying to get in there. And he was breathing heavy for a couple minutes, and then he, I couldn't, I tried to do CPR. I couldn't get him so back. he stopped breathing. And where's his body at? You're doing good, okay? Just tell me where his body's at, because i got to go find him. I, For you, okay? This is called closure now, okay? Where's where's his body at? Would you take it back home with you? No, I left it. You left it? So who's all in the car with you? All of us. James, you? Yes, we always know the three children. as a family. So all five of you? Yes. All right. And where... 
what park was this or where was this at in Middletown? Because it would make sense to put, to me, in a, did you put him in a dumpster? Did you put him, did you just let him lay right there? Was he buried? I mean, I, that's what I need to know. I didn't do nothing with him. I just left him lay in the parking lot because it was a plain parking lot. There was, I believe, like water over here or something. Mm -hmm. And there was a one little stall. And uh, I left him just lay on the ground. Okay. Did James, was, did James do anything with him? Your uh, boyfriend? I mean, it doesn't make sense just laying right there on the ground. So well, I left him laying in there on the ground because yeah. I was going to call the ambulance, but I was right. I was scared, shook up, didn't okay. know what to do. Okay. So. So now we need to figure out where this is at. Well, he uh, the ba the little boy was laying on the ground. I went to the bathroom, told him to try. You try real quick. Cause I couldn't hold myself. Mm -hmm. I told him you try real quick to give him CPR. Mm -hmm. And. So I went to the bathroom, I came out, he was gone. Okay. Where, what did the other two children say about all this? Um, well, they were in the back seat, so they couldn't. Okay. I'm going to give you a break here for a second, okay? Take it, relax, okay? I'm going to go out and talk to James real quick and see if we can't figure out where this is at, okay? Between Indiana and Kentucky. I don't really know my way that out. Now, James goes into a little bit more detail what happened to him, what happened to your son. Okay. First off, was James with you when all this happened? Your no. boyfriend. He was not. The, the three, three kids. The three kids and you. Yeah, well, he told me to go somewhere. To, to do what? To get rid of the kids. To get rid of the kids. When I went to go kind of pull off, he didn't have the handle in his hand. Mm. It was kind of just like standing there. Not close, close to the van, but just kind of standing there, holding the van door, trying to get back in. Mm -hmm. Well, that door out of, that door is messed up. Right. And it, it I don't want to unlock it, don't want to lock. So, um, I went to go pull off and James, as I was saying, he was a walk. He fell, tried to get back up, and he fell and hit his head on the ground. So you put your son back in the van. You drove where? Um, back home. Back home. What did the other two children? What were they saying or thinking? Did they? They were just kind of like shook up. Because from what you said, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. James told you. I want the kids gone. I don't want to see them no more. Yeah. So that, so. And he even told me, cause I want, I told him to just go upstairs. Okay. You can't, can't listen. listen. So, but when he, when you loaded up in the car with the kids, mm -hmm. you left Crawford Street with all three kids. Yeah. James was in that house. Yeah. He wanted you to take them somewhere and never bring them back. Yeah. Okay. I just went around him and didn't realize he had the handle. Did and you see him grabbing a handle? No. Okay, you're just but when I kind of like, he, I'm assuming he grabbed the handle because I kind of pulled him a little bit, not much, and he got up and it fell back down. I guess I kind of probably made him hurt his knee on the ground or something, mm -hmm. and he lost his balance, and um, he tried to catch his balance. He didn't get to right. and he fell and busted his head on the ground.
Investigators believe it was Brittany's intention to leave all three children at the park. Brittany stated she had planned to get the kids out of the vehicle and to leave them behind as James Hamilton had been pressuring her to get rid of the kids. When doing this, six-year-old James Hutchison grabbed onto the door handle. Brittany slammed the gas trying to leave the kids and drug her son, possibly running him over, according to the police report. The report goes on to say that Gosney went back to check on her son and he was dead. She told police she loaded the other two children in the car with James's body and returned to their home on Crawford Street in Hamilton. Police say she put her son's body in a spare bedroom upstairs. Sunday, February 28th at 3 a.m. after the other two children went to sleep, police say Gosney and Hamilton drove to Interstate 270 near Lawrenceburg. Police believe Brittany and her boyfriend dumped the six-year-old's body in the Ohio River and left. His body has not been found. On Sunday, February 28th at 10.16 a.m., investigators said Gosney and Hamilton showed up at the police lobby and reported the child missing. Police said that that was the first red flag because parents of missing children usually call 911. The boy's mothers told police that they had not seen him since Saturday night. On Sunday, February 28th at 10.53 a.m., a Middleton police officer contacts detectives saying he is suspicious of the story given to him by Gosney and Hamilton. Gosney and Hamilton were questioned and that they admitted they disposed of a child. On Sunday at 319, Hamilton is booked in city jail and he's charged with tampering with evidence and abuse of a corpse. At 918 p.m., Gosney was booked into the Middleton jail and charged with murder, abuse of a corpse, and tampering with evidence. On March 1st, crews began to search the Ohio River. The six-year-old boy's body still has not been located. Also on March 1st, Gosney's two other children took part in a forensic interview at the Marison Center at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. Monday is also the day that both suspects were arraigned. On Tuesday, another search warrant is executed at 507 Crawford Street, where six-year-old James Hutchison lived. Gosney will face a jury trial September 20th, 2021. Hamilton's trial was set for October 4th, 2021. The two are facing over 30 charges stemming from the death of Gosney's son. Gosney faces 16 charges including murder, involuntary manslaughter, tampering with evidence, endangering children, kidnapping, gross abuse of a corpse. Hamilton faces 15 charges including kidnapping, gross abuse of a corpse, child endangering, tampering with evidence, and abduction. Gosney was ruled competent to stand trial in April following a court-ordered mental evaluation. The evaluation was ordered after Gosney initially pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity. Information is coming to light in the James Hutchinson murder case. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Amber Jayon. And I'm Chris Riva. Ken Brown spent the day in downtown Hamilton taking a look at the latest court documents that have been filed, and he joins us now live from outside the courthouse. Yeah, that's right, guys, and these are allegations that are outlined in the Bill of Particulars, and among those allegations are children being hogtied, evidence being removed from the home, and a cement block being used to dispose of James Hutchinson's body. 31 charges are outlined in these 10 pages and several more allegations against Brittany Gosney and James Hamilton come to light through the Bill of Particulars. Our legal expert Mike Allen says 31 charges are listed. Gosney and Hamilton will not be found guilty on all 31 because several of these charges overlap. Many times prosecutors will uh, put charges in as a backup, so to speak, uh, especially in homicide cases uh, where if they don't get a conviction on the main murder charge. There's still a, a manslaughter charge there. 18 charges reference the children being hogtied the day before or the day of James Hutchinson's murder. The wording in the documents reads that James and at least one of his sisters were tied up. The abduction and the kidnapping charges overlap as well. And again, I think it was just uh, the prosecutor acting in an abundance of caution uh, requesting that the grand jury issue the number uh, of charges that they did. 
While Gosney's defense has already suggested an insanity plea, the court documents say Gosney and Hamilton knowingly tampered with evidence by removing the hard drive from video cameras in their home and also removing rope. We asked Mike Allen if those alleged actions could derail Gosney's bid for an insanity plea. It would show that, you know, she had the wherewithal and they had the wherewithal to uh, attempt to hide evidence and that does not help an insanity defense. It doesn't mean that it will ultimately fail for that reason, but it certainly doesn't help. So I did reach out to Gosney's attorney and uh, spoke with him briefly on the phone. He declined to comment at this time. Gosney is back. Uh, for a competency hearing on April 26th. Meanwhile, her boyfriend, James Hamilton, is back in court on April 12th. Reporting live in Hamilton, Ken Brown, Fox 19 Now. Ken, before I let you go, I do have a question. I can about tell you is the hog tying that's mentioned in here, it says in here that that either happened on February 25th or 26th. Now, the 25th is the day before Hutchinson's murder. The 26th would be the day of that they drove up to the park. Lewis Hutchinson, James's father, is quoted as saying, I don't even know how to process all of this. He was just my world. You could have the worst day on the planet, and as soon as you seen him, it just changed. He added that he hopes he see he hopes to see swift punishment for his son's mother. He said, I don't know how somebody could be a monster and do that to a six year old. Six months before James that Daryl, who is James' grandfather, says Gosney moved out of their home and moved in with Hamilton. According to Daryl, they did not approve of her new relationship, so Gosney cut them off, meaning they no longer had contact to those three grandchildren. James's two siblings are currently in foster care. They said they're doing pretty good, but I don't think they're doing real good because of what they've seen, Daryl said. They have to live with that. Although Gosney told police that they put James in the Ohio River after he died, Daryl has his doubts. He is afraid he will not get the chance to bury his grandson before he passes away. I think they've done something else with his body, and they're saying that so they won't find him because I think he was abused bad, Daryl said. That's the only thing that hurts worse is not knowing where he is. If we can get him laid to rest, at least we know he's resting peacefully. In Daryl's eyes, the stepdaughter he once knew and loved is now a stranger to him. The mother he says he believes turned into a monster when she did the unthinkable. I think she should go away forever. I think they should get life sentences, he said. That's just the way I feel. They took a life, they should lose theirs, he is quoted. Daryl says his last memory of his grandson will forever live in his heart. James hugged him, said goodbye, and told his grandfather that he loved him. He said James was always happy, always hugging. He'd be the first one to run up to you and give you a hug. Brittany Gosney was sentenced to 21 years to life in prison. The indefinite sentence means her final sentence will be determined by the Ohio Parole Board. James Hansel Hamilton is scheduled to be sentenced on October 4th. He faces a maximum of 19 years. Thanks for watching this episode of Murdered by Mommy, the James ha James Hutchison story. Please share, subscribe, thumbs up. Let me know if you have any other show ideas, or any other people. Make sure that you like this playlist and be sure to check back here on Mondays for more Murdered by Mommy. The website for custom clothing is here. Creative Queen Collection offers quality graphic t-shirts, champion hoodies, and other accessories. Keep COVID out of your face with masks and haters off your back with backpacks. Creative Queen Collection is also the premier website for your favorite influencers, latest merch, <laughs> hair flip. Type www.creativequeencollection.com in your web browser to start receiving your favorite custom items today. Shop at Creative Queen Collection.